I was in the White House, you know, just went in to see Donald Trump, and I was there when President Obama was leaving. And last time I was in there, I looked at all the furniture, you know, and I thought the only thing that's the same around here is the furniture. The people are gone, you know, so it's what we do and what we leave and how we make people feel. You said you were there with Donald Trump. Now, you did not endorse Donald Trump. I didn't. And here you were, the Republican, and you didn't. Why? Because I didn't like the way he ran his campaign, and I'm not going to support dividers and people who, you know, who are not lifting people, uh, no matter who they are. What about the personal characteristics? Well, I didn't like the way, you know, what I saw. And look, I was like a Ugandan swimmer standing on the eighth, you know, in the eighth uh, uh, row over there, like in, in the Olympics, right, in the swimming meet. And I'm standing way on the end. I watch these people insulting one another, not just him, all of them yelling back and forth. It was terrible. Yeah. So then let's get to the book, because that's what your whole thing in the book is. This country's at a divide right now. And right now it's whoever yells the loudest gets what they want. Yeah. How do you change that? Well, it starts with us, really. I mean, I don't I have no I don't put any um, stock in the fact that the people at the top are going to get it right. And look, here's the problem. We're not just talking about the politics. How about the United Airlines situation? How about EpiPen? How about Wells Fargo? How about these team these players being drafted by teams in Ohio who assaulted their I don't know if they or if they're remorseful or whatever. But what about a little values? What about what about a media that used to flash the camera on an empty podium to get better ratings and make more money? I mean, come on. These are not these things are not right. Not and disagreeing with you, but how are you going to change them? I mean, it's, it's not like a law can say you can't do that. No, I think part of it is us not taking the bait wherever we are. Um, you know, I went down to Atlanta and uh, Martin Luther King's daughter invited me down there, Bernice King. And uh, I did a was doing an interview just like this in front of three, four hundred people. And one guy in the back raised his hand and said, what about Trump? And I said, sir, what about Trump? I said, what about your family? What about your neighbor? What about the guy that lives down the street? You see, I don't think our strength comes from the top down. I think our strength is the way we conduct ourselves in our businesses and the way that we treat others and the way we want to be remembered. I mean, we want to live a life a little bigger than ourselves. And so how do you do it? It has to start with us. I mean, do you agree with that young lady? She's in the studio. It's how you are when you go out. It's that's how your Chelsea. friends talk. Chelsea, Chelsea. John, John, you know, Chelsea. No, I'm yeah. serious. It, that's what it is. And I think many of us think we don't matter or we're not important or we can't change the world. And that's nonsense. Understood. But if you were, you were in Congress, what, nine terms, I yeah. believe, right? So if you were in Congress right now, you'd have to be voting on specifics, in this case, the health care bill. You wouldn't be voting on the concept of where are we going to be as a, as a race, as a people? Where are we going to go? Well, I mean, what I would have been doing is I would have been saying, I would have been making an argument that we needed to bring the other party in. I mean, and, and if they didn't want to come in, then I'd be criticizing them for not wanting to participate in the process. Look, when I was there, uh, I ran the budget committee. It's an ideological committee. There's any question. But if you talk to the Democrats that were on the committee, they thought highly of me. I thought highly of them. I mean, we don't have to uh, agree with somebody to be to be social, to be uh, respectful to somebody else. And so when I was there, it wasn't that way. Now, one of my buddies who was down there after I left said you would have been in a rubber room had you stayed because of the way things were deteriorating. But I also blame that on the leadership, and I blame it on people who follow the leaders who never said, hey, knock it off. This is not taking us to a place where we want to be. Well, yeah, but you had Mitch McConnell saying he'd do anything he can to make sure that Obama did not succeed. Well, if my leader had said something like that, I would have said I don't agree with him. Yeah. There's too much go along now and get along 